lightning, and we often get asked about lightning. Uh, lightning, the best model to describe lightning is using the rolling ball model. Um, if you're looking at short structures, a rolling ball gets to your 45 degree type of rule that people have used for years. In other words, you find that that ball, so wherever the ball touch, lightning can hit. Let me just start at that point. So if you look at this rolling ball, if it rolls up, lightning can hit anywhere on this building, even though this is higher. People didn't believe me, I promise you. We've had high rise buildings, fourth floor down, the guy gets hit by lightning. So this is a very real impact. Once a building is more than about 50, 60 meters high. If it's small, it's this size, like a little tower, 20 or 30 meters high, you can see no problem. But this is the rolling ball model. It's a very, very good guideline in terms of where things can be hit by lightning. So do not believe in certain high structures that mounting it away from the top will protect you against lightning. Rolling ball is the most accurate way of doing it. And if it's short structures, your 45 degree um, rule, which normally says if you've got something there, 45 degrees from it either side, you'll be protected. That's quite true if it's a small um, structure. Um, antenna mounting pole must be earthed. I know people hate this, but if it's not earthed, you're achieving nothing because that rod that you put up on top that protects the unit will be hit. And if it's not earthed, it will arc over to the coaxial cable and run all the way into the house, arcing over to everything else that it can hit. Okay. If there's a equipment building and an, another building, for example, if there's a mast and there's equipment building, the earths must be interconnected. Um, people are once again arguing with me that if I've got a mast outside and a building, I don't want to connect those earths because the mast is going to be hit. What happens when that mast is hit? If it is not connected to the earth of the building, it will rise up to a few thousand volts and everything will arc over to the equipment inside the building. If they are connected, both will rise up to a few thousand volts, and there's no difference between them. So do believe me, you interconnect earths between, say, a mast and a building, or one building and the other building. Here's an indication of the rolling ball. Once again, if the mast is high, and when I say high, I mean sort of 60, 70 meters plus, you have to start protecting things on this side. Um, if you want to protect them, you can just put a spike out there and a spike out there, okay, so that the ball can't touch the antenna. So it's not impossible. At first, people look at this and say, how the hell do I protect things? You actually put a, a spike out the, uh, horizontally so that the ball can't touch the antenna, in which case lightning won't hit it. But just being above the top is not good enough. On smaller units, that's fine because the ball relatively speaking, will almost form your 45 degree line. And just having a pole higher than the antenna would be good enough. The rule that I use in terms of small structures, that's like mounting antennas on roofs and uh, masts, smaller masts, is that the mast must extend above the antenna, the amount that the antenna extends away from the, sorry, away from the mast horizontally. So if it's a log periodic, like this guy here, that spike there should be the same length as that. And if it's a panel antenna, it can be much lower because it only needs to be the same distance as that distance over there. Um, for Omnis, it's always best to mount them at the top in terms of performance, okay? And you can mount them like that. You do risk that lightning can hit them, but in the case of a properly earthed antennas and if you actually go to the inside of, for example, our antennas, we always make sure the whole antenna is earthed through to the braid and earthed through to the bracket. You won't get damage except the antenna will go to pot. Okay. So sometimes if the antenna is not mounted on a specifically high structure, on a building, and there's still trees around it, mounting it at the top is not bad. Um, but you do risk losing the antenna and most probably the equipment will be damaged. So I wouldn't do it on a tall structure that's very likely to be by um, lightning one way or the other.